Welcome to First United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Todd Laddick, and I am the pastor here at this church. And I'm uh, just so glad that you are tuning in to join us. Last week we talked about social justice and racial inequality and fighting for what is right in our community. Uh, here I am in beautiful downtown Newton at the uh, square, the Newton Square, the Newton Green. And uh, this right here, a week and a day ago, was uh, the, the place where Black Lives Matter held their historic uh, 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 rally uh, here in this square, uh, peacefully uh, demonstrating for black lives and for racial equality. And so uh, today, this is my location to uh, bring you the message. So as we begin to uh, prepare for worship, let us remember, and we will talk about this later, that we are called as Christians to go out into the world, not to stay behind our four walls as a church, but to go out into the world and to be the body of Christ, bringing the good news of, all, uh, of Christ to all people, regardless of the dangers that may come as a result of it. So I welcome you to worship. Please join me responsibly in the call to worship. Call to the Lord who hears our prayers. Sing to the Lord who delights in our songs. Wait for the Lord, the source of our hope. Worship the Lord, who is worthy of our praise. Now let us join together in singing our opening hymn, God Whose Love is Reigning Over Us, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. together as I pray our opening prayer. God of wondrous love, your miracles always catch us by surprise. When our time of blessing comes, may we laugh with Sarah and dance with Abraham. When our bodies are touched by your healing grace, may we bow before your throne of glory. Come to us now as we gather to worship that we might be touched by your spirit and made whole by your grace. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, 
Lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost cry, hear my call, hold my hand lest I fall, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears, and the night draws near, and the day is past and gone. At the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. As always, friends, it is our duty as Christians to uh, to be in prayer for one another and to uphold each other in prayer. There is much to pray about in our world, whether it be people dying of illness uh, because of COVID-19 around the country. And we know that in those states that loosened up a little early, uh, those uh, numbers are spiking now. And so uh, we need to pray for people across the, the country who are suffering still from this uh, pandemic. We also need to pray for people who are, are suffering because of the color of their skin and are being treated differently than they ought to be treated. We know that you, uh, that, that, that you and all Christians are called, uh, myself included, to, to be witnesses to Jesus Christ and to his uh, hope and healing and wholeness in this world. And so friends, uh, whatever we need to pray for, let us turn to God now in prayer. Gracious and loving God, I thank you and praise you for um, for your your presence with us in this community. I thank you, Lord, for the first responders who are are even right now rushing to help those who are in need. I thank you, Lord, for um, for uh, all of the people who are doing their part to make. Uh, COVID-19 go away. I thank you for the people who are doing their part to make racial inequality go away. I thank you, Lord, for all of the things that are going on in our lives. It's so easy for us to focus on the negative, but there is a lot of good going on in this world. With that said, Lord, there are still people who are who are um, struggling with their health, with their money, with their uh, relationships, with uh, their family and friends. So maybe struggling psychologically or emotionally, and certainly people who are struggling in their relationship with you. Lord, for those who are suffering from COVID-19, we ask that your healing hand be upon them. Lord, for those who are suffering because of racial inequality, we ask that your justice 
finally come to this earth, that it come like a roaring river, and that it, 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 it is not a justice that is partial, but a justice that is impartial, and that all people are considered equal in you and, in, and equal among each other. And so, Lord, we thank you and praise you for the work you are doing. But most importantly, we ask that you involve us in that work and that you encourage us and embolden us to be your people in the community so that we may spread your good news of inclusion, of justice, of hope, of healing, of wholeness, of love, and of peace to all people. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sunday school friends. Monkey see, monkey do. What does that mean? If your friend jumps off a cliff, would you jump too? Have you heard those before? When friends try to get us to do something we don't want to do, that's called peer pressure. I have a monkey joke for you. Why did the first monkey fall off the boat? He died. Why did the second monkey fall off the boat? He was tied to the first monkey. Why did the third monkey fall off the boat? Peer pressure. Let's think about peer pressure. What if you are playing at a friend's house and she tells you to steal some cookies from the cookie jar? What if your parents tell you not to watch TV, but when they go outside, your brother tells you to turn it on anyway? What if your teacher asks you not to run in the hallway, but all your classmates are running? What if you see someone being a bully and your friends are watching and laughing? What would you do? What would Jesus do? What does God want you to do? What does God want you to say? In the Bible, we can see sometimes that Jesus liked to talk about animals to show how people sometimes act. One time, Jesus told his 12 disciples, listen, I am sending you out just like sheep to a pack of wolves. You must be as cautious as snakes and as gentle as doves. What are all these animals like? What would a pack of wolves do if they found a sheep had come too close? Then Jesus went on to say, but don't worry, God will speak through you. Whoever holds out through to the end will be saved. Let's hear the story of three friends in the Bible's Old Testament who held out to the end for God. Three friends who did the right thing, even when everyone else was not. God's people were captured and taken away to the country of Babylon. The king of that country was named Nebuchadnezzar. Three young Israelites, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worked for King Nebuchadnezzar. But when the king wanted them to bow down and worship a golden idol he made, they wouldn't do it. We can't. Let's go. So the king called for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Is it true that you did not worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you a second chance to bow down and worship, or no god will be able to save you from my power. Nebuchadnezzar, you certainly have the power to throw us into the furnace. And our God has the power to save us. But even if he doesn't, we will not worship your statue. 
The king was furious and told his soldiers to heat the furnace seven times hotter than usual. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in. But guess what happened? The men in the furnace didn't burn up. God sent someone to protect them in the furnace. The king was surprised when he saw four people walking around. So he told Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out of the furnace. And the king made a new law. No one would be allowed to say anything bad about the God of Israel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did the right thing. They would not bow down and pray to the big gold statue. It was not the real God. They obeyed God even when their friends chose to do the wrong thing. When King Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the fiery furnace, it was as if he had sent them like sheep into a pack of wolves. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego held out to the end, as Jesus had told his disciples to do, and God protected them. God wants you to choose to do the right thing, and God will protect you when you do. Let's see what God's protection looks like. Let's see what God's protection can do. Over here, I have some raw eggs. They've never been cooked. They're soft, so they can easily be cooked. My grandson, Brian, is going to do something that seems impossible. Brian is quite a large, strong burden to put on these breakable eggs. Let's see. Okay, Brian, come on over. Step cautiously, carefully, gently on the eggs. The B I B L E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E, the B I B L E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. Just to show you that this egg really is raw. Took one of the eggs out of the... There it is. And let's keep it in. This eggshell is God. This egg yolk is you. And God has been protecting you, protecting you from the burden that was put upon it. Remember the animals Jesus talked about to his disciples? Well, Brian was cautious as a snake and gentle as a dove when he stepped on the eggs. Today, when people are careful to do or say the right thing, we say they are walking on eggshells. It's not easy to do what God wants us to do sometimes. Things get in our way, like peer pressure. When all the kids in school are telling you to do the wrong thing, it's hard to stand for what is right. When everyone says that something we know is wrong, is okay. It's hard to speak up and tell the truth. But God needs us to light the way and show people what is right. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did in the fiery furnace, they showed King Nebuchadnezzar who the one true God is, and he became a new man. Let us pray. Dear God, 
Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Teach us to be wise so that we will know how to do what is right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. No more monkey business now. Have a good week. Scripture readings today are from Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 through 23. Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Here are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also called Peter. Then Andrew, Peter's brother. James, son of Zebedee. John, James's brother. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. Jesus sent out the twelve apostles with these instructions. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but only to the people of Israel, God's lost sheep. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. Don't take any money in your money belts, no gold, silver, or even copper coins. Don't carry a traveler's bag with a change of clothes and sandals or even a walking stick. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve to be fed. Whenever you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If not, take back the blessing. If any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. I tell you the truth, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. But beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other unbelievers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child. And children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. All nations will hate you because you are my followers. But everyone who endures to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one town, flee to the next. I tell you the truth, the Son of Man will return before you have reached all the towns of Israel.
our Lord is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. Yet Christ sends us out to proclaim his good news in a world of ravenous wolves. Such a task can seem daunting, dangerous, and scary to say the least. Despite that, despite that, we are to venture forth in trusting our Lord and remaining faithful to him. Now last week I shared that I have benefited from systemic racism. And that was a hard and uncomfortable fact to share. It's not because I'm afraid to admit the reality of that. I, I willingly and openly admit the reality to that, uh, to myself, uh, let alone to others. So I'm not afraid of that at all. Rather, I know there are people within our own congregation, as well as family and friends, who are going to disagree with me and possibly vocalize their disagreement, maybe even unfriend me on social media, maybe not talk to me. I know somebody who, whose own family members have stopped talking to them because, uh, because of, the, uh, of, of her view on, um, on social justice and racial equality. Someone who does not like conflict, that can be quite a scary possibility one that could hinder someone from saying what they ought to say. Of course, that fear is centered on people who mostly know and care about me. So you can imagine the fear of venturing out of that circle, carrying the gospel truth to a world that does not know nor cares to know who I am. We all feel the same fear when it comes to speaking the truth when it comes to social and spiritual woes that are plaguing our society and its people. We will often say, we're not political, and so we choose not to engage such conversations. However, the truth is that we are all political, and those moral things that matter to us deeply should not be hidden for fear of conflict. What's more, the ability to remain silent is a privilege not all people have. And our privileged silence actually silences the voices of the oppressed. Silence can be violence, depending on the context. Christ, Christ is calling us to bring the good news to all people and to trust that He is with us as we do so. Now, in Scripture today, Jesus had just finished telling His many followers that the harvest was plenty, but the workers were few, before calling twelve of them to be His disciples. These are all people who had been following Him from place to place, as well as listening to Him teach, and out of those followers, Jesus selected 12 to be his disciples. That's the context where our scripture reading picks up today. Guess what Jesus' first action was as teacher of his new band of disciples? I'll let you take a guess. He sent them out. He sent them out two by two telling them to bring the good news to all people in Israel, God's chosen people. He commanded them to heal the sick, raise the dead, no pressure, right? Cure those with leprosy and cast out demons. He also told them to take nothing with them for their journey. No money belts, no money, no traveler's bags, heck, not even a walking stick. Rather, he told them to rely on the hospita hospitality of strangers, strangers, and told them to bless the homes that welcomed them while kicking off the dust of their sandals outside of the homes who rejected them. But then, then Jesus warned that he was sending them out as sheep among wolves. And that there, that there would be 
perils to taking this next step in their faith and journeys. He was sending them out as sheep among wolves and there were going to be perils for taking that next step in their faith journeys. Now the wolves, of course, are the people of this world who are not receptive to God or to the good news. Rather than listen, they are quick to attack and devour in order to discredit anyone countering the worldly message of division, sectarianism, racism, meritocracy, and putting oneself and one's ideas over and above the common good of all people. All ultimately putting those things over and above God, even God himself. I can tell you that uh, after Saturday, uh, last, not, this, not yesterday, but the Saturday before, uh, when Black Lives Matter was here in the square, I could see such actions where people were screaming, honking their horns, trying to divide and, 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 and disrupt the, the Black Lives Matter protest. And thankfully, we uh, took the higher road and didn't acknowledge them and kept on keep keeping on doing what we were doing. Uh, but they were doing everything they could to disrupt the, the movement. They were yelling and screaming. They were shouting out names. They were doing everything they could to make as much noise as they could to detract from the cause that was being demonstrated here. On social media, there are, have been plenty of people who have attacked me because of my stances without even giving a, a thought to the other side of things. As Christians, as followers of Christ, you are being called to take the next state, step in your faith journey. You are being called to be a people who not only profess uh, your faith in Jesus Christ, but who are willing to venture out into the world for Christ's sake, the wolves be damned. You are being called to place your faith and your trust in Christ to give you the right things to say, even if it means some will hate you as a result of it. And despite my fear of conflict, I have, I have learned to find my voice and to use it. Not only in the church context, but out in the world, whether it be at town meetings, at town meetings or at rallies, or social media or elsewhere, yes, I have come up against some wolves along the way, but I have also seen some hearts change for the glory of God. And truth be told, we all can be wolves at any given point, and at one time my heart needed to be changed as well. So we've all been there, and God is calling us to do our part to bring the message to all people, wolves or sheep alike. We need to be as as shrewd as snakes, but as peaceful and calm and wise as doves. Do you trust? Let me ask you this question. Do you have the courage to be a bold messenger of the gospel of truth? Let me ask that differently. Do you trust that Jesus Christ can and will empower you to have the courage to be a bold messenger of the gospel of truth. The gospel truth. Are, we are all to remember that Christ calls us to fulfill his mission of bringing good news to the poor, to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor is near. Let us as Christians pay no mind to the wolves. Rather, let us set our hearts on Christ and make what is important to Him vitally important to us. Amen? Let us identify with Christ. The wolves may howl. The wolves, my friends, may howl, but Christ has already conquered the wolves. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you and praise you for this challenging message. We thank you for leading us to be a people who go out into the world 
the wolves be damned, and do what it is that you've called us to do. Give us the courage and the strength to move forward and to be your disciples and your apostles in this world, bringing good news to all people, bringing the gospel truth to all people, now and forever, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now, friends, I would like to invite you to uh, remember that part of being a Christian and part of being a part of the body of Christ is to give not only of your time, your talents, your prayers, your witness, your service, but also of your gifts. Everything that you give helps us to be able to do the ministries and missions and continue on uh, what it is we are doing here in Newton and beyond. As you can see, I am not a pastor that is stuck behind the four walls of the church. I'm a pastor that is out and about connecting with the community and hopefully leading you all to do the same. We've touched lives through giving cards. Today I dropped off more uh, stones and masks and, and um, and uh, and other stuff to the hospital uh, to to our chaplain at the hospital, so that people's lives, the healthcare workers, the frontline workers' lives, can be touched and uh, and uh, can know that God loves them and is with them in this challenging time. There's so much we can do as the body of Christ. So I ask that you would give deep, deep, and give with all of your hearts to what we are doing, so that we may continue on this good work. Give with all of your hearts.
Let us pray. Touch these gifts, O God, with your manifold blessings. Touch our very lives that we may be instruments of your hope. May our gifts and our lives bring your healing, love, and compassion to a world in need. Amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of celebration, Lift High the Cross. you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you go out into the world boldly as the body of Christ and remember that God is with you, guiding you each step of the way. May you go out as sheep among wolves, as, as uh, shrewd as snakes, but as, as gentle as doves, so that we may bring the gospel truth and the good news of Jesus Christ to all people everywhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.